Before we go, we're going to focus on the Preserve Island Life campaign, which is brought to you by the City of Key West. Now, this campaign challenges and it assists individuals, businesses, and organizations in preserving the island way of life. We'll talk more about it this morning with the Sustainability Coordinator, Allison Higgins. Allison, it's always nice having you on the show. It's great Thank to be you. back. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Now, I understand that April is designated as Water Conservation Month. Yes. So what all have you been doing to promote that? Um, we've got a bunch of different projects uh, lined up. And the main reason we're doing this is, as you know, we live at the end of a very long hose. So um, we've already been capped at how much water we can suck up out of the ground on the mainland. So anything else we use... Uh, that we want to use, we need to come up with in some other way. Um, we've got some emergency plants um, here on the mainland that work with salt water, and it's a very energy intensive process um, to create fresh water or salt water. Um, recently, the aqueduct, uh, Florida Keys Aqueduct Authority, built another plant that's up on the mainland that's for reverse osmosis, and that's taking kind of the brackish water, which is a little bit salty and turning it into fresh water. That's a, it's less energy intensive, but it still takes more, um, it costs more when they flip that switch and have to use it. The Keys has had historically, um, the, we have, has had the least water use per capita. So per person, we've used the less, least than the rest of the state of Florida. But we've been creeping up. And um, when we hit, they've already been having to turn that reverse osmosis system on more than they thought they would by this point in time. And if the projections keep going the way they are, they're going to have to have that on a lot of the times, which affects everybody's bill. You know, if it costs them more money, sooner or later they've got to pass on that cost. So the more we can do right now to make it so that per, you know, if, if you're without even necessarily having to change behavior. If you turn on your faucet, you get just as clean and you don't know what's using half the amount of water, that's perfect. So we're looking at both the kind of, there is the behavioral side, um, we're looking at the fixtures side, you know, your, your, your shower heads and stuff like that. And also even looking at rainwater catchment. You know, you've got all this great water that comes from the sky and then it, you know, runs off and disappears. But if we can use that, especially for our irrigation for our, um, landscapes and stuff like that. We can still have the lush landscape, but you don't have to put drinking water mm -hmm. on your plants. Mm -hmm. So we're kind of looking at all those things. Um, Monday was an amazing day. I think it's the first time that all, uh, we had all the different planners from across all of the municipalities here in the Keys. So uh, the county was there, city of Key West was there, Marathon was there, Isla Mirada was there. We had assistance from the city of Miami as well as um, South, Water Water, South Florida Water Management District mm -hmm. and um, Aqueduct. And we started talking about how can we make policies together across the board. Um, because, yeah, the city of Key West could do it, but if our rules are different than somebody else's rules, it's harder on the resident who wants to do something you know, because they work in Stock Island or they, you know, they live in Key West and they work somewhere else and the rules are different. It's easier for the contractor because the rules are all the same. And then, therefore, it's cheaper for everybody and it's easier for us to enforce because the rules are all the same. So we're sitting down to kind of look at all those best management practices and agree on the same language together, which is kind of fun. And, um, and it's just great to work with other like minds on this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the policy angle that we're, we're working on. It's going to take us a bit of time because, you know, to get everybody on the same page and, and in agreement is going to take that. But we've got some really cool little events in between. Um, we have a local chapter of the U.S. Green Building Council. And this week, Friday, they're actually having from 4 to 6 p.m. at the Gatto Building on Simonton Street. Um, they've got three great speakers coming in and talking about fixtures and other things you can do in rain barrels. Um, following that, walk straight down the street to the bottle cap and there's a community garden fundraiser for Glee and that actually goes from um, 5 to 8. There will be a rain barrel workshop that we're working with the Extension Service on and that's on the 27th of this month, 10 a.m. to noon. You can RSVP, um, you can find it either on our website, uh, preserveislandlife.com or on our Facebook page, same thing, Preserve Island Life. And the last one, we're actually going to take a tour of the local desal plant um, here on Stock Island, and that's going to be on the 30th. So we've got a lot of different projects coming on, and yeah, just find us on Facebook and, and uh, 
find out what you can plug into. Wonderful. Well, hopefully people can be joining you in some of these events. Allison, thank you for being back on this thank morning. Thank you. Look forward to talking with you next month. <laughs> All right, and everybody, thank you for tuning in with me today. I hope that you'll be able to join me again tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. and back at 8.30 a.m. Take care, everyone. Have a great rest of your day. It'll be okay It'll be okay